What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is John and this is John Paul Investing. First things first, this video is sponsored. So just to give you guys a small history lesson, back in the 1970s, Richard Nixon passed the Controlled Substance Act, which gave substances based on their criteria, certain schedules or classes, they're labeled by the government as having a lot of therapeutic value, some therapeutic value, or essentially no therapeutic value at all. So this is not to get into the controversy of any substances, but I wanted to point out something that Entheon Biomedical is doing with their pursuit to regulate and administer DMT therapies in a way that can be therapeutic for people with substance abuse problems and addictions and things around uh, possibly even mental disorders. We have seen a lot of widespread adoption with cannabis and marijuana over the recent years, so there is a chance that in the future we will see the same movement, but with psychedelics like DMT, also known as the God Molecule or the Spirit Molecule. There are stories of people taking ayahuasca, which contains DMT naturally. Shamans use it to create some kind of organic brew that people will, you know, traverse the Amazon in order to drink. So Entheon Biomedical's goal is to be able to uh, save you that journey across the Amazon and to give you a regulated and safe way to administer this, knowing that it is regulated and clinically tested. And I'm very excited to talk about this company because there is a lot of use case for this if they can, you know, prove it clinically that it does benefit people and there have already been signs that it has in the past based on their research. So in their own words, Entheon Biomedical is pioneering a leading edge addiction recovery solution that harnesses and optimizes the therapeutic potential of the DMT molecule. Entheon exists to invert the addiction recovery ratio, turning the untreatable case and lost cause from the norm to the exception. We are committed to the legal development of regulated, safe, and effective therapies and in educating the public and medical profession as to the efficacy of psychedelic protocols when clinically administered in the optimum set and setting. When it comes to treating addiction, the rate of success is so low that society has been conditioned to accept and even expect failure. This manner of thinking is both unacceptable and counterproductive. There is a need for an alternative approach that addresses the human cost of addiction for individuals, families, and society at large. We are developing a DMT-assisted therapeutic protocol that will be specifically tailored to address the core mechanisms underlying drug-seeking and using behavior. Our chief aim is to provide an effective, scalable therapeutic protocol that will serve as a vital resource for those afflicted with a substance use disorder and who are wanting to reclaim their lives. So they are targeting specifically those afflicted with substance use disorder. So I pulled up directly from the CDC overdose deaths during uh, CV-19, and we have learned that over 81,000 new drug overdose deaths happened in the 12 months ending in May 2020 last year, which is uh, when we did experience one of the peaks in CV-19. So all the while there was CV-19 deaths, underlying these deaths, people were at home, and there is a chance that there was new uh, drug addictions that were forming during this long period of time of essentially not being able to go out and do things like we were used to doing. So all of this correlates to the possibility of more drug overdose deaths. And Entheon Biomedical wants to address this problem by essentially treating the need for substance abuse at the source. And they are going to figure this out with their new phase one clinical trial, which they announced with the CHDR or the Center for Human Drug Research. This trial is expected to start in 2021. However, it is expected to start in late summer of 2021. So we are in April now. It is likely we won't see the trial start for another two to three months. So Entheon Biomedical is working with the Center of Human Drug Research, which is an independent institute that specializes in cutting edge early stage clinical drug research. So Entheon Biomedical is looking to leverage the expertise and experience from the CHDR into their clinical study. Aside from leveraging the CHDR, they also acquired a genetic testing business by the name of Halugen. They're in the business of developing and commercializing a genetic test designed to identify specific DNA biomarkers in order to gauge the risk and potential of adverse reactions towards hallucinogenic drugs. Or even more simply put, do your genes have some kind of effect on you having a particular reaction with uh, any kind of hallucinogenic drug? Entheon Biomedical did confirm that Halogen's proprietary psychedelics genetics test kit and technology platform has completed research and development and is nearing commercial production. In tandem with its research and development partner, Lobo Genetics Incorporated, Halogen has successfully developed a turnkey operation to build, order, ship, process, and deliver its psychedelics genetic test. 
Halogen's platform builds upon Lobo's existing genetic testing capabilities for both research and direct-to-consumer applications and is the industry's first comprehensive pre-screening genetics test for psychedelics. So Entheon Biomedical is taking the steps uh, to essentially standardize the process to figuring out whether you are uh, a good candidate for DMT psychedelic treatment. I believe this is a step in the right direction for Entheon Biomedical, but you have to remember the clinical trial has not even uh, started yet, so uh, we have to wait for some things to pan out before we can jump to any conclusions just yet. Timothy Ko is the CEO of Entheon Biomedical. He has an entrepreneurial background, starting with his family businesses. They worked across a multitude of businesses, including managerial and service-based industries, some investment properties that their uh, family had. So he has always had this entrepreneurial mindset. But the key takeaway here is that he says psychedelics are what saved his life. So if this is the case, he has a passion surrounding this business. And if he can perform as an entrepreneur, this is just the tip of the iceberg for the potential for this business. He is surrounded by medical professionals on the scientific board of advisors. We have Matthew Johnson, PhD, Robin Harris, PhD, Dennis McKenna, PhD, Christopher Timmerman, PhD, Malin Utag, PhD, Kenneth Tupper, PhD, and Dr. Michael Walker. As of April 2nd, 2021, Antheon Biomedical is trading at 65 cents per share on the Canadian Stock Exchange with a market cap of around $35 million. Their 52-week high was $1.35 per share with a 52-week low of $0.21 cents per share. So they are trading on the lower range of the spectrum regarding the you know 52-week low and high. However, they are a pre-revenue business, so they are operating at a loss until they can follow through with their road plan and eventually commercialize their product. Their estimated timeline is as follows. So 2020, they had a pretty successful 2020, even despite CV-19. They are able to push some patents through the uh, US trademark office and were even able to secure some contracts despite the CV-19 crisis. 2021 looks like it's gonna be more of a bridge year where they try to discuss the benefits of the therapies from the DMT molecules, seeking more regulatory approvals, European regulatory discussions, and an initial meeting with the FDA to outline a path for upcoming clinical trials. So on their timeline, we're not expecting any kind of real FDA approval for at least the next 12 to 18 months. They have a variety of phases within their clinical studies that they have to progress through and submit, which is the NDA submission before they can even uh, think about waiting for an FDA approval. There's a lot of things in the middle that are going to be essentially roadblocks, but if they can get past all of these roadblocks, then the next step is can they commercialize it? And at that point, as investors, then we can really start to see the true scale of this new emerging industry in psychedelics. Entheon Biomedical was included in the first North American psychedelic ETF. Entheon Biomedical is pleased to announce its inclusion in the Horizon North American psychedelic ETF. This is the first ever ETF of its kind. The new ETF is expected to start trading on January 26, 2021 under the symbol PYSK on the NEO exchange, which is a Canadian stock exchange. We are thrilled to have Entheon included in Horizon's psychedelic ETF and look forward to supporting its development through our participation. The creation of this ETF and index signals the growing acceptance of and interest in psychedelics as both a treatment and investment, and we are proud to be a part of this growing community. Currently, the Psychedelics ETF is trading at around $8.86 per share. And on a daily chart, you can see that this is a very new ETF that, that was only listed just a few months ago. There is a trend of less regulation against illicit or hallucinogenic drugs. Starting in 2005, kind of being the, uh, the initial domino effect, the New Mexico Court of Appeals decides that growing hallucinogenic mushrooms is not illegal. Fast forward to 2015, a massive long-term study of 19,000 people who reported using psychedelics concludes that the use of psychedelic drugs could not be found to cause psychological distress, anxiety, depression, or suicidal thoughts, at least on their own. Neuroscientist Terry Krebs furthermore noted that drug experts consistently rank LSD and psilocybin mushrooms as much less harmful to the individual user and to society compared to alcohol and other controlled substances. Now, alcohol, for example, like really attacks your liver. It's essentially poison for your body. We're not exactly sure how poisonous, if at all, these things are to the brain, mainly because they have not allowed clinical studies because of heavy regulation. Fast forward to November 3rd, 2020. This was a huge day in the U.S as voters in Oregon and Washington, D.C. dramatically change their respective state's law pertaining to psychedelics. In Oregon, the voters overwhelmingly passed Measure 109, which would legalize psilocybin by a 56% majority. This measure will mandate that the state health authority create a program for administering psilocybin products to people 21 and older. 
Oregon's Measure 110, the addiction recovery centers, took it a step further by not only decriminalizing the personal possession of a variety of drugs for adults, but also allocated state funds towards health assessments, addiction treatment, harm reduction efforts, and other services for people with addiction disorders. And Washington, D.C.'s Initiative 81, the Entheogenic Plants and Fungus Measure, which amazingly passed by a 76% yes vote. This declares that police must now treat the non-commercial cultivation, distribution, possession, and use of entheogenic plants and fungi among the lowest law enforcement priorities. This means that the police, if they get two calls, one being that someone got caught with, you know, mushrooms, or if someone got caught with stolen money, they would have to go for the call with the stolen money and not for the phone call with the mushrooms. And remember, there are reports of the Biden administration more willing to let the states decide what they want to do regarding substances and things of that nature. And there's a chance his administration might remove some substances from the Schedule 1. And according to the Controlled Substance Act, a Schedule 1 drug has a high potential for abuse with no medicinal value and is not safe for use even under medical supervision. Things like cannabis are considered a Schedule 1 still to this day. So it's no question at all that this industry, this sector of uh, new medicine and therapies has a lot of reform and progression before it is really a full-fledged industry that can become the next greatest investment. Remember that this video is sponsored and I have no holdings in this company as of today. And investing money in this business still is highly speculative, mainly because there is still a lot of questions that need to be answered and because the roadmap is still at least 12 months out from today. Now that doesn't go to say I'm not excited for the industry. I think that this industry has a ton of potential. If you wanna know exactly when I do decide to buy this company, I highly recommend you guys check out the Patreon group in the description. I let you guys know exactly when I buy or sell particular stocks that we talk about here on this channel. And don't forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull using the link in the description. But anyways, that is it for today's video. If you liked what you're watching, please go ahead and hit that like button. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell notification to get notified when I make videos just like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.